Welcome in to the Cool Grandpa Podcast. This is the podcast where we talk to grandfathers, adult grandchildren, and experts in areas of importance to grandfathers. Whether you're a new grandfather, a seasoned pro, or somebody interested in learning about relationships, this is the place for you. So come on in. Join us as we learn together, laugh together, and support each other on the Cool Grandpa Podcast. Welcome in. I am glad you're here this weekend. So for those of us in the States, uh, this is Masters Weekend. So I know there's a lot of people focused on golf at the moment, and hopefully uh, Tiger Woods is still in the hunt. It's always a great tournament when he's playing and he's able to actually, you know, go the distance because it's been a little while since that's happened. So all the azaleas are in bloom here in Georgia. Everything is greening up. The pollen monster is out and about. And I hope wherever you are, you're getting a load full of spring, that the birds are coming back, that the grasses are greening up, that everything is getting ready for a awesome summer of being a very cool grandpa. Now, I want to remind you and let you know of something. So for those of you that know about Grandparents Academy, this is a great resource for grandparents. I love working with Aaron and his team over there. And Grandparents Academy right now is soliciting uh, courses for Grandparents Week. So this is a great chance for you to chime in Talk about what items you would love to have a course on during Grandparents Week in September. I'm going to put a link into the description here on the video as well as on the show notes. So if you're out there listening to this, you will be able to go to my show notes, get that link, and then be able to uh, chime in, shoot Aaron a message and connect with him. Let him know what's on your top of mind as far as uh, topics around grandparenting. This week's guest is Lee Osler. Now, I met Lee through Roland Thompson, and Roland and I have been connected for a couple of years at this point, and he's running the hearts of the father. And what Roland is great at doing is connecting people, and Lee is one of those people. Lee's a dentist in Washington. He's got over 20 grandchildren and is also a great grandpa. We have a fun discussion about how to manage and navigate those relationships from when grandkids are very young to when they're older and to their teenage years and their early adult years. You are going to enjoy this conversation. So without further ado, let's jump into it. Hi, Lee. Welcome to the Cool Men Pop podcast. I'm excited to have you on to talk about being a grandpa. Well, thank you, Greg. It's a, it's a pleasure to be with you. and. I can only say that when I grow up, I hope I'm like you. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. Hey, um, as we get started, what I'd love to do is have you give a brief introduction, a little bit about your your childhood, where you grew up, and today kind of uh, what you've been doing professionally and and even as a grandfather. Well, thank you. Yeah, I'm. Um... I'm still breathing, so I'm alive, and that's good and well, but it was, I was born a long time ago, um, actually born in a small town in central Washington called Moses Lake, and shortly thereafter uh, moved to uh, the state of Utah where my parents attended college, and then so I, I basically grew up in central Utah and southern Utah uh, where my father had employment, and then just as I graduated from high school, we moved back to Washington. Um, and so I didn't spend much time here at the time I left for college and um, served a mission for my church. And so I spent the next eight to 10 years, you know, kind of off on my own track, uh, getting my own feet underneath me. I went to uh, uh, University of Washington Dental School and graduated as a dentist, you know, a long time ago. And, uh, and again, still stayed in the state of Washington. So I live right now in a, in a town in southeast Washington called uh, Richland. Some might know it the Tri Cities, but it's been home for me for what the last forty plus years. Uh, we've raised a family, and uh, we're still here. I'm still practicing, and so obviously, probably more at the twilight of my my uh, official career. But uh, so that is kind of who I am and where I've been. Oh, very cool. And I, I'm familiar with that area a little bit. I spent a lot of time. Um, I was born in Portland, Oregon, but then I was living in Vancouver, Washington before I moved out here to Atlanta. 
Yeah, you're just you're that would be just downriver from us a ways. So yeah. Yeah, we we used to love taking drives down through the gorge and, and all of that and being out. And it's amazing when everybody talks about uh Oregon and Washington, everybody thinks about the greenery and the big trees and everything, but once you get over those cascades and those blues, um, everything goes in the high desert and it's very brown. It is. It has its own uh, measure of beauty. You know, the the thing I like about it is that there's a lot of sunshine here, and you can see for a long distance. So we we trade a little bit of the greenery for that, but uh, we've got a lot of water around us, a lot of rivers, and so we're okay. now one of the questions I love asking grandfathers is to get their reaction and, and their memories around when you found out that you were going to become a grandfather for the first time, because everybody has a different reaction to that. Well, I, I know for myself, I can't speak for others, but for myself, you know, that day was never going to happen. You know, you're just, you're constantly uh, living in the now and the moment. And, you know, this is just for old people. And I I didn't think of myself as old. And I, I remember when my oldest son uh, came to me and um, I, I don't know if at the moment in time he knew, but, you know, that the jig was up in this regard, but he, he said, you know, it's not going to be too long before your name permanently changes. You're not going to be dad anymore. You'll be called grandpa. And, I, you know, it caused me to reflect back on, on my relationships with with even my own dad. You know, um, his name changed to grandpa as I was interacting with my children. Um, I, I might have called him, you know, face to face, one on one as, hey, dad, you know, what about this or that? But in all other settings, um, I even began to refer to him as grandpa. And sure enough, that happened and stayed. That was kind of a, it was a bittersweet pill to swallow. You know, you have to kind of take care of your own ego in, in some ways. But, um, you know, it certainly is a recognition that life goes on. And, and now you're in a different role, a different position, a different status within the family. And, and so it's, it's just different. So. That, that was the one thing I do remember, you know, was, uh, and then when it actually happened, um, it was, it was a uh, sweet, you know, the bitter went away to sweet because you just, you just swallow it up and you just go for it. Oh yeah. Yeah. Well, and I can relate. I've had the number of deaths that have been on where it's been a combination of, I thought this day would never come in terms of becoming a grandfather and then having the other ones and myself is, is kind of in this photo. Wait a second, I'm too young to become a grandfather. What are you doing to me? Well, I just recently had, you know, in the last, what has it been, a year, uh, I know a great-grandpa a couple times. And, um, you know, that's that's the next thing. I don't think this was so hard as the first time, but um, it, it changes your viewpoint and, you know, the way you interact or think about your family, at least, at least it has for me relative to my role. You know, like what I, I'll tell you that one of the biggest things that I uh, has happened to me in the last uh, maybe two or three years, uh, maybe I'm just slow to the game, but I, I remember one day having this, um, I, I'll call it a vision, but it wasn't a vision. It was just more of a, it was just, um, it was a, a mental picture, you know, of of a family picture. And I was in it, you know, of all my family. And then all of a sudden, my image just kind of disappeared. It just kind of like dissolved away, and I was not in the picture anymore. And I thought, here I have all these, you know, grandkids and family now. And it's like, when I'm gone, what are they going to know about me? You know, what are they going to think about me? Will I be even still be in the picture, you know, after I'm gone? And, and I think some of that was, um, you know, we all reflect back on our own grandparents, you know, uh, who are you know, at our age, obviously they're, they're long deceased, but, uh, you look at, at their impact in my life and, and did they really, did what they did, you know, 50 or 75 years ago, uh, filter through the generations and, and how will it ever touch or influence my children, grandchildren, great grandchildren. And I just saw myself in that picture and I thought, oh my, I, I've never had that, um, that experience before it was a little, it was a little emotional, you know, it was, it was in my own heart and my mind. And, uh, and so that has, um, at least in the last few years that has affected or changed, you know, some of my thinking about what, what it means to be a grandparent and, you know, in five or 20 years when I'm gone, uh, as we all certainly will someday, 
like what did you leave behind and you know what impact did you have so those have been kind of some of my musings and can i wouldn't call them consternations but i you know it's like you go there sometimes and um but you don't have those thoughts or feelings when you're 30 or 40 or 50. I, I never once, never did that. It was, you know, and, and now I do. So there's there's a changing of the guard there uh, somewhere along the way. Well, sure. And as you were talking, I was thinking too, when you were mentioning about the lasting impact that we have is sometimes that lasting impact is where did we move for a job? For me, moving out here to Atlanta, Georgia, what would life have been like uh, for my kids and, you know, who would they have met had we not moved out here and changed those circumstances around? So I think sometimes the impact that we have is not just um, that leadership, that philosophical impact, but it's also what are we doing for our careers? Where, where did we choose to grow up? What have been some of the things that have happened to us that then get passed down as part of uh, circumstances or results of, of, of action. Yeah, those are things that, um, you know, are hard to address sometimes. Uh, you look at your own life and say, how did you meet your spouse? And how did you come across the job that you had, uh, that you had or have? Uh, and, and realize that if it weren't but for a different decision five years earlier or 10 years earlier uh, as to who you were, what you were, you know, what your uh, disciplines were and so forth that that all those little things uh would have been different and you know some of this can get into the deeper um philosophical and ideological stuff i get that but um you know i i happen to believe that our life has a purpose to it and that we are, we're guided and directed and but we still have our own agency i mean we we can royally mess things up sometimes but still uh, that's how we learn <laughs> and that's how we go forward. Yep. Yeah. Well said. As you were uh, growing up and, and I guess even becoming more mature as a father, what were some of the thoughts that you had about being a grandfather? And were there any role models around, whether it's inside your church or outside of the family members that you looked at as far as, oh, that guy's got a really great relationship with his kids and grandkids? Yeah, I could say from inside my family, I don't, I don't know that I had any super great role models. I didn't, I didn't even know my maternal grandparents. I should say my, my maternal uh, grandfather. Um, I'm not even sure that I ever met him. There was an acrimonious separation of the ways early, early, you know, in my life, and I'm not sure I ever met him. Um, I spent a lot of time with my grand, my maternal grandmother, but um, on my, on my father's side. Um, the distant or the uh, the relationship I had uh, with my grandfather there was totally determined by distance. You know, we lived states away. Um, we were never really um, physically, logistically, you know, temporally close. Uh, it was always maybe a once a year, once every other year, and and writing letters, you know, typewriter kind of letters uh, at the time. And so even telephone wasn't utilized because it was long distance and you were timed. You could only say a few sentences and you were done because of the cost of long distance telephone. Those were the days, I guess. But um, so I, I really you know, didn't grow up in an era where my family provided you know, great role modeling as a, a, a grandfather. So, you know, I did. Um, th there were people, you know, I, I won't name them, but there were people that I associated with who I always um uh, admired you know i i um i wanted to be like them when i grew up kind of thing you know it's like wow that's pretty cool um and i, and I think i'm not so different from everybody else uh, for some reason our our society and our culture tends to um to admire those with wealth and means and you know time freedoms and uh, a lot of toys and so forth, and so we go. Well, I wished I, I wished I was rich enough that I could do X, Y, or Z, or you know, that I could take all my grandkids on a cruise or or fly them to here or there. And we kind of get, I think, sometimes caught in that trap. And I, I haven't been that, you know, different than anybody else. But um, we're all limited, and so we have uh, people around us um, who model and exemplify, you know, other kinds of values. 
that and that's that's what I've had to um, lean on is realizing that it's not about it's not about money it's not about you know the toys and the privileges and so on and so forth and it's, it's not fruitful to go there even um, what really matters is that we discipline ourselves with with the attention that we give you know the 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 time uh, is how you spell love you know type of thing it's like uh, making making the grandkids a big deal and and you know not not judging them just accepting them and um, and and being a role model for them I, I think is that's been where my focus is is like uh, I can see other people doing wonderful things but and and that's fun to copy you know get ideas and 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 uh, personalize them uh, to your own situations. Um, and I think that's worth modeling. You know, there's there's probably every one of us probably has dozens of other men, other grandfathers in our circle of influence or the circles that we run around in that we could look at and take a little piece from each one of them and kind of make a composite, you know, of them and say, that's what I really aspire to be like. I love that because I think sometimes as fathers and as especially young grandfathers, we get caught up with the idea of we've got to do the Disney vacations. And there's nothing wrong with that. Or we've got to do, you know, something big. we we got to go to New York and we've got to go to a Broadway show. We've got to go to see Yankees or, you know, whatever that is, the, the big thing. And those are all fun and they can create fun memories. So I think some of those get caught up with the idea that the actual quantity or the quality of that relationship is really built around simple things like eating pizza at the kitchen table or mm -hmm. playing checkers or going trout fishing or some of those things. And I think it's a great way to step back and go, hey, play the big fun activities and do those. But understand that the, the real memories and the lasting memories are going to be felt in those uh, quiet times. And as great authors, we can't pick out what those are. Uh, that's why some folks talk about quantity. You know, you have to have the quantity time in order for the grandkids to actually pick out the quality times. Uh, because it could be it's something as simple as driving down to the A&W for a hamburger and a milkshake. And for a grandfather, it's like, hey, we're going to go have lunch, and this is going to be fun. But to that grandkid, this is an incredible treat, and it's just me and Grandpa, and we're just doing this thing. And that's what we is remembered 45 years later, not so much, uh, you know, the big vacation as far as impact goes. You know, I think some of that might have to do with our own egos. You know, sometimes we're doing this to... You know, because it, well, if I was uh, if I was uh, rich and I was a, I was a real man, you know, I could I could do all these things. That, and 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 yeah, I think you're exactly right. You know, some of the funnest times I've had with my grandkids is just kind of go get a get a blizzard, a DQ, or you know, uh, do a treat or something. Um, it's just kind of one on one stuff. And so I, that's one thing I've tried to to I need obviously we all need to do better, but it's it's been something that I've done uh, a bunch is is scheduling time in with them and say it's I have, I have 20 grandkids and so it's you know if you said well i went if i went out um if i went out once um or twice a year with each of them you know that's 40 that's almost like a weekly thing with somebody right and right. so if, if you'd only had maybe two or three grandkids why well, it'd be uh, logistically a lot easier to do in but um, you've got to be fair. You've got to be even-handed. You know, you don't play favorites. You just, you just go. And so that's that's been some of the fun stuff that I've done. Is we just uh, we just if there's an hour, we go. We just run off and go get a get a nice cream treat or something. God, what I love that. I do want to step back a little bit and talk about what the relationships and, and what things were like for you with it or with the first probably first few grandkids as they were coming along because uh, just like a new dad, when you have baby number one, that's a whole different experience versus baby number four. Um, and so if you could take us back and talk to us about some of those early relationships and, and some of the early things that you were doing with those grandkids, that'd be great. 
Well, I think one of the fun joys of being a grandparent is get, you get to babysit. And I, I never looked at it as uh, imposition. You know, we'd always try and schedule it, obviously. Um, everybody's busy. But I, I looked at those op as opportunities, you know, to build a relationship. Um, it, it's also kind of fun to know that they get to go home when you're done. <laughs> That's kind of the inside joke for the parents, right? Is, uh, you know, my, but babysitting or child care um, in, in those situations were always, I always viewed them as a, as a rich opportunity to build a relationship mm -hmm. and, you know, get down on the floor and wrestle with mm -hmm. them or what, whatever, you know, whatever the age was that um, their interests were. And so um, I, mm -hmm. I enjoyed that. And as the younger ones uh, became not so young and now they're middle aged, of course, they're not so excited to rough and tumble necessarily on the on the floor or do the silly stuff that the young ones do. You know, coloring uh, coloring books is not a that's not something that your teenage grandchildren, you know, will get into. Uh, but you know, when you're when they're young you've got a uh, precious amount of time before they past that phase yeah. uh, and of course if you've got many grandkids you've got you've got various grandkids at different stages all at the same time so you kind of have to be artful about how to choreograph all of that so that you can kind of get them all in but eventually their interests change and they're not so interested in in um, you know the silly uh, tickling um, you know things that grandpas you know, like to do they want to do more sophisticated things if they want to do them at all <laughs> it's like They've got friends now, and they've got social media, and, you know, you'll be lucky to get a word in edgewise sometimes. Oh, sure. It, and it's amazing that, um, I think, just that transition, because I think just like uh, parents, when the kids get older, you wish that they were younger. They could go back to those stages, and then I think even as grandparents, sometimes it's natural for us to go, oh... I remember when they were three years old, and this was such a fun activity. Now that they're eight, they don't want to do that anymore. No. Yeah, you have to kind of um, adjust, and you know. But again, it goes back to the same. The same basics are just the esteem that you have for them, the non-judgmental uh, time that you spend with them, and um, uh, the, the relationship. You know, we we've been working with some projects that you know, deal with grandparenting and in some of the surveys we've done, it's the time and the attention are the are the key um are, are the key things that most grandparents are focused on. You know, is, is they need more of it or they have a hard time getting more of it, you know, and so you've got to find some creative ways to build those interactions in. Oh sure. <laughs> How has the relationships changed and morphed over time in what you do as the grandkids were hitting middle school and high school and even starting into college? Uh, in, in terms of the activities I did, you mean? Activities and then how you adjusted to those changes as well. Well, there, there's kind of two sides to that in some regards. You know, there's um, there's the idea of of balancing all the different ages, you know, in the spread of grandkids. Uh, there's balancing, you know, your own personal work needs and the time that you have available to uh, spend with any of the, anybody. It's like uh, you, you've got um, set amounts of time. You've got, you know, like when you get more grandkids, you've got all kinds of, you know, athletic events and um, school plays and you know, dramas or whatever that's going on that's in their life that, that you need to schedule in. So I think it's about being responsive. And, you know, one of the things that um, has lately, um, maybe I'm a slow learner, but a, a kind of a, a more recent discovery on my part is uh, you've got to get into their world. If they're on social media, get into social media. You know, they, that's the only reason I'm really in social media is so that I can follow them and like them and comment. And I, I want them to know that I'm watching, you know, that I'm, that I'm interested in, in what they're doing, their interactions. And then just, um, you know, I've got one grandchild who's uh, really big into dad jokes. And so that has become kind of something that we pass back and forth once in a while. Um, he thinks I'm rather old fashioned, but it's kind of fun to annoy him with a dad joke because there's this specialness to it, you know, and we do that through text. 
which you know, it's always in their hands. They're always looking at it, so you know they, they're seeing it, whether they reply or not. Um, but, but you kind of have to be flexible, and you, you've got to be. It's not about you. It's not. A, it's, it's all about them. You know, get into their space wherever that is, and um, and, and interact with them there. Oh, sure. And then, how do you feel like some of your impact and your input has gone? I know it's this balancing act for some grandfathers to not intrude too much, uh, especially as they're older teens and, and young adults, but then still wanting to, I don't know, provide some insight, provide some guidance, some lessons learned to the grandkids. Well, I think that starts, at least in my mind, by um, being oriented around what I call principles. You know, if, if you're going to show up and judge them, if you're going to show up and I don't know manipulate them or or make make comments in a way that reflect that you disagree, you know um, uh, they're not going to want your influence. They're they're going to pull away from you. And so, you know, one of the things I think from a principled point of view is, and and I'm going to be speaking in broad generalities because it's not always true in every case. But you know, I, I start with. You you, you uh, always assume good intentions. You know, you assume that they that they have you know a basic understanding of right and wrong. Whether they live that way or not, I don't know. But you know, at least in my family, they've, they've all been taught uh, sufficiently to know right from wrong, even though they may not make those choices. And so, if you if you um, as a grandparent, you know, if you try to show up and be the parent. When there when there are parents, you know your children are the parents. Um, that doesn't that doesn't go well, you know. In my in my judgment, and so you you stand back and you say, well, if that's a principle, then any interaction I have with my grandchild needs to be, you know, without judgment. Um, and, and I'm not saying that you accept what they do; you just don't judge what they do. And through that, I had a leader one time tell me, he said, it's, it's very important that you maintain your relationships in a way that you have influence. And, and again, to be respectful of their agency, we're not here to, you know, uh, abuse or take away their agency, perhaps, because they can make choices. And that's, that's all about, um, you know, experience is probably the best teacher of all. They've got to, <clears throat> you know, they've got to make some mistakes along the way in order to get experience and to learn things. And if I show up and try to be the teacher, to be the the disciplinarian, to be the judge, you know, to whether I approve or don't approve of them, I, I, I pretty well sabotaged my own effort, you know, to have any influence at all. And so I've, I, I think with that in the back of my mind, then um, my, my whole point of being a grandparent is just to maintain connection is to is to be able to whatever influence I have is what they will take from it, but I'm not trying to put it on them. I'm not trying to manipulate them or coerce them or to judge them or you know not ex or 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 dis you know show my disfavor you know kind of a thing. It's like whatever they're doing, I don't know that it, again within reason the side of the house could fall off. You know you just kind of are unfazed. You go oh you know how that work out. I had one. Uh, one professional coach one time share a really important mm -hmm. concept with me that has really, uh, none of us are really good at it uh, unless we work at it, but he says, if you must speak, ask questions. And I thought that's a really good um, thing to keep in mind, especially with your family. Um, they don't need your lecture. They, just, you know, if you must speak, ask questions, you know, how, how did that work? What's that? How's that, you know, how's that doing or, you know, what, whatever, but, um, and much of that's on the fly. You're just kind of figuring that out as you go. But um, if you start, if you start being the teacher, and when you're not invited to be the teacher, or don't have permission to be the teacher, I, th I think it's a quick way to lose your influence with your kid, with your grandkids. Oh yeah, I, I I agree with that. It's and I think as grandparents, we're in a situation. Where if we ask the questions, if we're listening, you know, we're not judging and we're not trying to dictate values or what should be done. Sometimes I think we can be the bridge to have kids and parents reconcile that there is a split. Because 
uh, all kids growing up, they want to separate from their parents at some point. And that level of rebelliousness and that level of, of seeking out their self um, creates a lot of pain and a lot of rifts sometimes in families. And I think with, like you were saying, if praying parents come in and say, hey, you're not living the values we taught you, you're not doing this, you're not doing this, it just drives them further. And then it makes that reconciliation even that much more difficult or impossible because you do have the e egos on either side, right? You have the kid that, you know, maybe wanting to change, but they've, but that way just is there that they don't feel that they can come back. I, I think this has a lot to do with roles, you know, and, and I think a lot of grandparents don't understand their role. They, they have, um, they have something pre-made up in their mind about, you know, what they think their legacy has to be or how they want their grandkids to turn out or, you know, they're trying to fix the problems in the family that they didn't get right with their own children or something. I don't know what it is, but, but I think we're confused sometimes with our role. And I, and I, and I, again, assuming good intentions, I don't think that grandparents are ill intended in, in that regard. So that's, that's not the issue. It's the, it's the mechanism or, you know, the way they approach it or, but if they understood what their role was, I think is the better we understand our role. And again, this is this I'm speaking in generalities. If there's grandkids that don't have parents in their life at all, you know, through divorce or, or death or runaway or whatever, well, you know, maybe those are some different situations. But I, and what I can say, you can almost speak to the reverse more confidently and say, if you violate any of those principles, you know, if you if you um if you um, withhold their agency or violate their agency or are, are judgmental, you know, if you, if you don't withhold or if, you, if you're uh, you know, laying that on them, you just lost the, the opportunity to, to have an influence. And so uh, my mom had an expression once where she said, you might, you might lose a few battles, but what you really want is to win the war. And, and in, a, in that context, it's not that we're in war with our family, but it's like there's a bigger picture here. And there are some times when you, you say, let's pull back. And, and I just want it to be such that when, when my grandchild, you know, runs into trouble in their life, <clears throat> that they know that they can come to me and, you know, that we can sort things out. And sometimes that payday doesn't happen for a long time. You know, it's, it's just like your, your, your comment about in your own relationship with your parents. You know, once you hit, you know, what, I don't know, 12, 13, 14, until you're probably 20, all of a sudden your parents are stupid and dumb and they don't know anything. And it's not until they hit about 25-ish that you're smart again and they'll come back and talk with you. And so, you know, that's just a part of the way life works. And during that period of time, you know, if, even as a parent, if you shut them down and, you know, it's going to be a much longer time before they can you know, resolve those things and come back to you and ask for your opinion. And so I just, for myself as a grandparent, I, I just don't want that to be the case. And, and again, there's, there's, uh, you have to have your own judgment in that, you know, your own behavior, because I, I'm oh. certainly not going to let a, a five-year-old uh, who wants to go play in the street, right? That's, right. you know, that's, you know I, I will violate their agency in that regard, but that's a, that's a, a time or an age appropriate kind of thing, right? Oh yeah. Well, and I think it goes back to what she said with that professional coach about the the asking the questions because even I think as as a dad when you get those teenagers that you want to strangle and throw out the back door in the middle of winter, you don't do that. You start asking questions. You go, oh, so how does that behavior work out for you? How did right. that decision work out for you? How did this happen? You know, and, and you kind of lead them through those questions back to uh, maybe some alternatives you hadn't thought about, maybe some things that, uh, you know, they hadn't thought about. But you do that through the, the questions versus only, if you do it this way, it'll work out, and I'm the dad and I said so, because that never works out, I mean, even as a grandparent. Yeah, and, and I think a good metaphor for that is, is about dancing. You know, like life's a dance, as they say, and it's, it's a kind of a cutesy metaphor but if if uh, if you and your your spouse or your girlfriend or somebody else if you were dancing with them um, and you pushed toward them they're going to follow your lead and they'll either push back 
or pull away. And so what you want is to be inviting, you know, in a, in a dance, when you, when you step back, they, they, they follow you. Right. And so I think that's a good metaphor for this interaction between, you know, what, what I would call parental or grandparental uh, authority figures and, you know, uh, grandchildren, especially is if you're pushing on them, they're going to, they're going to resist or they're going to, they're going to run away. And so if you, if you redo your own ego and your own thinking and, and kind of get yourself out of the way and say, what can I do to get them to come toward me? Because then we can have a conversation because ultimately they have to figure it out themselves. You know, that's what we're trying to empower is to be a light to them, to empower them and to leave them better off than, um, than if we'd manipulated it into the outcome that we wanted for them. Oh, I love that. I love that analogy. Um, Lee, how have you seen the role of grandfather change, uh, or or have you? I I feel like now that with our life expectancy increasing, there's more grandfathers, more of us are in better health, um, and even there's even more great grandfathers. Where great grandfathers used to be a pretty rare thing, and grandfathers were a fairly rare thing, but now. We're getting more of that. Have you seen the role of grandfather start to change at all since maybe you were young? Yeah, maybe. I think, you know, certainly today compared with, you know, 50 years ago, we could speak to longevity. I, I wouldn't necessarily call that better health, but I would say that we've got we have medical interventions that, you know, keep us alive longer perhaps. And so there's, there's more years, but, you know, on that point as a, as a healthcare professional, I'm, I'm, uh, and you don't have to be a healthcare professional to observe this. It's like, um, as I hear it all the time, if people say, if I just had better health, if I had more energy and more stamina, <clears throat> they're alive, but they're miserable. You know, they can't really interact with their grandkids or do the things that they would like to do or, you know, attend their events or, or whatever because of their own health. And so, you know, I, I, I just kind of say it as a, as an almost a side issue is that, and for some people, it's their main issue. It's like they're just not helping. And so we, we need to be thinking about that as if I'm going to maintain some ability to have an influence in my family and kind of not dissolve from the picture, as it were. I need to stay in the picture. I need to protect my health. I need to protect my mental health and to be so that I can respond and, and be there and be present. Um, you know, I think the one of the biggest concerns I see other people having, and myself included, is is the changing times that we're in, the the the, the uh, platforms that we have. I was thinking back before there was ever, you know, cell phones and, and computers even. It's like if we went back 40 years and said, what would the grandparents of that day complain about the rising generation relative to this question? They would say, oh, all they want to do is go out in the backyard and play <laughs> or, you know, whatever it is that would occupy their time. And today, you know, it's similar, but we just say all they want to do is have their head in the screen and and uh, be texting or, you know, um, short form videoing, TikToking reels or whatever. And, you know, it's like, it, I don't know, 50 years from now what the thing is going to be, but for today, it's, it's um, not a whole lot different. There's something else that's going to distract our grandchildren's uh, time, attention, energy away from us, and we just have to figure out, well, how is it that I'm going to meet where they're at? Um, you know, as long as it's not illegal, immoral, and so forth, where do, how do I get into their their space? And I think those are the, you know, the times will change, but I think the common um, threads through all those still remains, how do you communicate that they're important to you? You know, how do you spend the time? What kind of activities? Does it have to be one that you spend money on, or is it? Is it? Can you do otherwise? Well, one of the things I've I've been doing lately is it's kind of the counterintuitive of, of yeah, I, I'm not really great on Facebook, or you know, I don't do TikTok and I don't make reels, and you know, that's the world they might live in, at least some of them. Um, but I can still write a note, and I can still put a stamp on it. And I, and I actually got a call from uh, one of my grandkids um, the other day who thanked me for the note. And said, nobody ever sends me letters. And it was so stunning to him. He called me up. I didn't catch it. He left a voicemail. But, you know, he commented about how special that was because nobody ever writes me a letter. 
And I thought, what a simple thing. And of course, as you're your grandparent now, that's what we always did, you know, early on this new stuff we, we, is new to all of us. So um, to me, the, the, the text messaging just gives you multiple opportunities, you know, to do more of it. But, you know, I, I really found great joy in just penciling a note and, and age appropriately putting kind of a colorful sticker on it, you know, that uh, you can do this, you are awesome, you know. And that's really kind of the message I'm trying to send is that you're awesome and it doesn't matter what anybody else thinks. I think you're cool. You know, I think you're awesome. Oh, yeah. I, I love that. And that's one of the things I try to tell people is, hey, go get postcards. Yeah. Even uh, my five-year-old grandson loves getting a postcard. That, that snail mail is, is absolutely wonderful because it's not something that they normally, um, they normally get anymore. That's, that's a, that's a treat. That's something different. That stands out. You know, it's as marketing people call that the purple cow, it stands out. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, I'll tell you too, we, with my grandfather and me, when we ride back and forth, as I was, um, a younger professional and I'd go do, uh, projects and I might be in Des Moines or I might be in Dallas or I might be wherever I'd get postcards and just send them back to my grandfather as a way of keeping touch. And then when he passed, uh, my mom was able to give me back those stacks of uh, postcards that I was sending to him. And, uh, you know, that communication started because I would get letters from him when I was younger. And so it's just a neat way to stay in touch and be, hey, you know, I'm in this city for now, you know, doing this project. But well, now we know why you're the cool grandpa, because you were first the cool grandkid. <laughs> <laughs> Oh yeah. 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 Um, Lee, what are some of the lessons and we've talked about a lot, but what, what are maybe a, a couple of lessons that a new grandfather could take to heart and, and maybe, you know, plan on if, if there are any news that, Hey, in the next six months, you're going to become a grandfather. What, what are a couple of things that you'd like to share with them? Yeah, that's a great question. You know, it, it takes me back, you know, 20, 25 years to, when, when that started to occur in my life and, and so it's like, what, what do I wish I would have known then that I know now that I could have done differently or thought differently. And, and number one, I think would have been to be a little more involved in their life. You know, I mean, this, there, there's nobody that ever perfect in this and we all kind of dump on ourselves, but uh, that would be one. And the other is, is to respect your children uh, who are the parents of your grandchildren um, because if you, if you start off and get on the, on their wrong side, you know, they are now the parents. Just think of when you were a young parent, what it would have happened in your relationships with them, your parents, had they come to you and started to tell you how to be a parent. And so we kind of have to respect that. And my, I remember when my mother passed away, she had a saying, in fact, um, she had it, uh, thumbtacked to her little, uh, bulletin board. And it, and it was, um, um, it's just as dishonest to steal somebody else's consequences as it is to steal their bread. That was her, mm -hmm. that was her saying. And, and I've thought a lot about that and said, what that's really saying is you have to respect other people's right to fail. You have to, you have to respect their, their right to learn from their own experiences. And so, um, I, I would probably be a little slower to absolve all the consequences and you know absorb them, but I, I would be more in a reflective mode. I'd be more, let me help you through this. I won't take it away from you, but I'll help you through it because I love you and you're awesome. And I will. And, and I think in that regard, you're you're beginning to set up, you know, the the I don't know the expectations or the you know the ground the ground rules of how you're going to be as a grandparent to your grandchildren that um, you're not going to judge them, that they, you know, they can always come. You're not going to violate their constant, their confidences and you can solve problems together um, because we all kind of need that. If you go back into your own life and say, when I had a problem, did I always feel comfortable talking to whoever, right? And no, I never, I didn't always feel comfortable uh, talking to my parents had there been somebody I could have, and, and I'd known and trusted that they could help me through it. You know, I think that's always a positive thing. So, gosh, you know, the, the what I would have done different or the things I would tell somebody coming along now 
is uh, just understand these principles and realize that you as a grandparent can change. You know, don't don't be so stuck in your own ways with your own ego about how things have to work and and you know your your uh, your dramatized you know uh, opinions about society or values. And it's like what's what's most important is that you have an influence for good. That you're a light. That that you can empower because ultimately they have to solve their own problems. And I I think if you start with that that pretext in mind. Um, you know, all the all the other stuff of, you know, the, the things you can afford to do with them or tricks or activities or, you know, um, what to do when you're in the park with them. I mean, all those things will kind of figure themselves out along the way. But if, if I don't start with the right ground rules, the principles, then I think I'm going to wind up making more mistakes as a grandparent than I otherwise would need to. That, that's good advice. Um, we have had you on for a little bit. Is there anything about your experience as a grandfather or anything about grandfathers in particular that you would like to mention that I haven't asked you? Well, you know, some of the things that we would, you know, if you asked a hundred grandparents that they say, well, just love, love them. You know, it's like, all right. So what does that mean? Right. Um, and I think it's wrapped up in all of the above, you know, you, you um, People will say, "Well, if I spend more time with them, I know." But what does that mean? You know, what what time? What what kind of time? Right? I, I'm a busy person, so you know, some of that has to be choreographed. And people in retirement, they might have more flexibility with time. But then you've got the issue of distance, and it's not just physical distance. It sometimes can be um, emotional distance. You know, may, maybe your maybe your grandkids are just distant you know they're, they're not wanting to engage with you and so those are a lot of things to try and figure out and the only way you can get through to them is to is to somehow have expressions of you know of love and that you matter and that you're awesome it kind of doesn't matter what you do you're still awesome you know that's you know you, you that's the core message i think no oh, i love that and what was jumping out at me is the idea that uh you know, as grandfathers, as grandmothers, we love the potential of those grandkids. Even if they're stumbling, even if they're having a tough time, it's, it's that loving and knowing the potential of those kids. Yeah, and I and I think the last thing I might say is, you know, especially when you, you back up and refocus on what I would call the big picture of, in our society, um, I, I'm referencing a survey that I'm privy to that by far and away, the, the biggest um frustrations or worries that grandparents have is about the changing world around us and the influence that that will have on our grandkids or our great grandkids and so um the point is is like well, who's going to help your grandkids through this you know in their life wherever they're at uh, who is it that gets to show up and and make the world a better place and, and i think some of that is that, is that we tend to want to go we tend to want to change the world around them, you know, to make it a better world for them. But I, I, I like the idea of, uh, I think it was President Roosevelt said, but we, we really, what we want to do is help prepare them for the world that they're going to face. And so we, that means that we have to get out of ourselves. We have to get out of our own um, agenda. And, and we've got to kind of set that stuff aside because it's not about us. It's about how do we help them be prepared um, by being there and by by being connected. You know, they're not they're not doing this alone. And and when you think about legacy, you know, you think about what's your legacy going to be um, after you're long gone, after you're dissolved from the picture. Um, it almost it, it doesn't go back. In my view, the fact that you went on a cruise to you know. Mexico with all your kids or a Disney vacation. Uh, that's not your legacy. Your, your legacy are the empowering, um, uh, the, the, the empowering capabilities that you participated in helping them discover, you know, in their own life so that they can, they can solve their own problems as they meet them. And 50 years from now, they'll look back and that's what they'll remember about you is that you, 
you loved them, you accepted them, you allowed them to make their mistakes, and that you were a home base for them, that they could, they knew that they could come back and that you had your back, that you had their back. So. You know, I, I love that. And uh, Lee, I know I've had you on for a while, and I just want to thank you for being on the Cool Grandpa podcast. This has been a great conversation. Well, like I say, uh, you are a cool grandpa. Thanks for inspiring me, and hopefully everybody else can grow up like I want to be and be a cool grandpa. Sure. And Lee, if folks wanted to get in touch with you or, or reach out and see some of the stuff you're doing, what's the best way for them to do that? Well, I'll share my email. Um, it's just my name, Lee Ostler, O-S-T-L-E-R, at gmail.com. Um, anyone can email me. I'd be happy to interact with them or share what we're doing. Uh, we'll have to get back on sometime as we, we're, we're working on some grandparent projects, uh, a group that I'm in, and so we'll maybe be able to share more someday about um, things that are that touch on some of the things we touched about here. No, I absolutely love that. I look forward to that conversation. Good. So, Lee, thanks, thanks again for being on the Cool Grandpa Podcast. Hey, thank you very much for having me. Have a good day. You too. I really enjoyed having Lee on the Cool Grandpa podcast. It's easy to see how Lee is a cool grandpa. I love the fact that he was able to share with us his experiences with being a grandfather for young grandchildren and grandchildren that are now in their early adulthood. I love the way that he was talking about how grandparents can be that non judgmental but loving force in a grandchild's life to really be able to be there and support them and let them know that we love them no matter what. We know inside every single home, people learn how to push each other's buttons. And sometimes that can make communication really kind of difficult as well as putting a strain on those relationships. But a grandparent who loves the adults that are taking care of these grandkids really has an opportunity to help kind of smooth some ruffled feathers, be able to provide some guidance. I enjoyed getting his perspective on that. Next week, I'm going to be talking about grandfathers and grandparents raising their grandchildren. This is going to be a really emotional story that you're going to be able to hear and experience. You're going to learn more about how grandparents raising grandkids is becoming I don't know if it's more commonplace or just more visible, but either way, you're going to enjoy listening to this conversation. And I think it's going to open your eyes to how many grandparents out there are really involved in raising their grandkids day to day. Now, if you've liked this podcast, I'd love for you to subscribe to it on your favorite podcast app. I'd love for you to share it with a friend or family member if you feel inspired to do so. So until next time, remember to stay cool. Thank you for listening to the Cool Grandpa Podcast. If you've enjoyed this episode, please do me a favor and share it with a friend. That's the best way you can help us to expand our community, as well as get the news out about how valuable grandpas are in the lives of those kids. If you'd like to leave me a comment or shoot me a potential topic for this uh, podcast, please go to www cool-grandpa.us look for the comments tab fill it up hit submit it's as easy as that until next time remember to stay cool